Today I am setting up my bullet journal for the week and I actually have a couple of things I want to put in here besides just the usual shit. Can you even believe it? Probably not. Let's take a look at the last week in my bullet journal. I did go through and catch up on my llama's love lettering kind of shittily, but I did do it on my Instagram at llama letters. However, I have not caught up on the doodle challenge or the Harry Potter doodle challenge that I did in November. I am gonna catch up on both of those. And part of me wants to be ambitious and go back through the entire year and figure out what llama's love lettering and every damn day challenges I didn't do and do like a marathon catch up. And if I do that, I'll probably be posting about it in the Llamas Love Lettering Facebook group, so that might be where you want to go to see that. But anyway, this is where I am at for the lettering challenge that kind of caught up. It looks, like I said, kind of shitty. Turd Burglar, Cheese and Rice, Fart Knocker. I'm really enjoying these prompts, and a bunch of you are too, these like non-cuss word cuss words. So into December, this page was blank when I did my setup, and I decided to use it to list out all of the topics I'm going to do for December Daily for my thing. And if you haven't watched, I've done two videos so far. One explaining December daily what I'm doing and doing the cover and then one for this spread and then I've actually done a couple of more spreads moving right along I got something checked off my list yay and then here are my habit trackers now I actually have been tracking my habits I didn't catch up on it for November but I've been working on it and I have failed ass at waking up on time and at the course I just haven't had time I will deal with that at some other juncture my kidney pain has actually over the course of the week been kind of escalating and today I'm actually not feeling so hot but I'm gonna soldier through and do this video anyway and if you'll notice I have done two blood pressures and one was today and that is some sexy blood pressure for someone like me who has high blood pressure so yay I'm getting there I'm gonna try and get through as much of December as I can because I have a phone call with my doctor in January and I want to be like look look what I did man I did what you asked me to we've gotten two episodes deep into Mindhunter and I am really enjoying it I need to add the crown onto here and maybe I'll do that in today's video for season two because I watched season one before my husband's probably not going to watch it with me he wasn't into it when I was watching it before but I'm excited I've been seeing suggestions from you guys here on YouTube and on Instagram for other shows that are a possibility and I just got to figure out which ones we want to like kind of go for I have gotten three days of December daily done which is good I'm on track for that here is my oh so cute doodles thus far for November we have these ornaments on our tree that we call turdy ornaments and they kind of look like this they look like little poops and they were actually from my grandma's Christmas tree when my mom was a kid and these two have survived all of the years and the moves and the shitty packing job that we all do and then Nintendo doodle challenge thus far I'm having fun this little Goomba which is my jam if you remember the little toys from the Happy Meal where back in the day when like, I think it was Mario 3 came out in the regular Nintendo, I'm dating myself here. Um, it was the little Goomba and it had the suction cup like on its chin and you would bend it over and it would go boing and like jump up. It was my favorite McDonald's Happy Meal toy besides the little chicken McNuggets of Halloween costumes. Last week I was wrapping up bullet journaling here starting on Monday. Like I was bullet journaling here and I finished this page up and then I came to here and I bullet journal on this page and I just need to finish filling in my sleep and get started for today's time tracker. I got everything on this priorities list done except for this other project that I need to work on today. But I'm liking how this looks. And then to start, because yesterday I bullet journaled, I put down this uh, buffalo plaid looking washi tape that I got from the dollar spot to bracket this because as you can see from my three days of December daily, black and red has been kind of my, my colors that I've been gravitating towards the last couple of days. So I figured why in the hell not? And that gets me through the week. I just took a second and went and checked my mail and it was my most recent Erin Condren order. It's a pretty small order, but I'm excited about it. I'm gonna have it in my vlog that's going up probably tomorrow by the time you're watching this video, maybe question mark. And I, you may have seen it on Instagram story. I, this is weird. I'm in like the time traveling land right now. I also took a second to look up how many episodes of The Crown there are in season two so that I can add it to my TV page. So that's what I'm gonna start with right now. Before I get started on any of my challenges, I am going to do that just so I can, you know, be done with that and be good to go. So let me draw in my little grid. I fucked up, so I am adding that doubled up line to both of them to make it look like I meant to do that. Pay no attention to the woman behind the curtain. <laughs> 
and it looks like it's starting on the 8th, which is later this week, or tomorrow, I guess, by the time you're watching this video. Again, I'm lost in the time travel paradox of me filming these on Mondays and putting them up on Thursdays. Maybe one day I'll change my mind as to how I publish my videos so I don't have to deal with this shit anymore. Now we're gonna do Oh So Cute Doodles, and it is trees. And there's some trees. That was a nice little quick doodle. Okay, what's next? Nintendo Doodle Challenge. What do you got today? Yoshi! Oh, I love me some Yoshi. He's so cute. Let's see if I can do this without hating my life too much. Fair warning, I am looking at a reference to kind of help me with this because I have not spent a lot of time doodling cartoon characters from like, or video game characters since my days of doodling Marvin the Martian back in the 90s. This is kind of a drunk Yoshi. And there's a fuck up right there too, but that's okay. Close enough for Yoshi comfort that this kind of looks like balls, but that's okay. <laughs> oh man. Okay, where are we at now? I think I'm gonna put my time tracker here so this can be used for more bullet journaling when this area is done. And I will enter my llama's love letter in every damn day area and do that after I finish drawing the time tracker in and so on and so forth. You know, one of the things I'm enjoying about these Tombow mono pens, the more I've used them over the last few months, is that for the most part, I don't notice any smudging when my hand rubs across them, which I have sweaty ass fucking hands, TMI. And sometimes my, if a pen has the chance of smudging, my sweaty ass hands generally like help the situation along. And so having them not be super smudgy is super handy. I have this green like plaid washi tape from the Hearth and Hand collection. Is that what it's called? Hearth and Home, Hearth and Hand, whatever, the fucking Fixer Upper People collection. By the way, this little strip of washi was the one that was in their like little holder it came in, so it's all janky. I hadn't actually used this yet, so that's why I'm not using it right now. I am getting rid of it because it's all funky looking. Anyway, the Fixer Upper People have their line at Target, and I have said in previous videos, I'm just gonna add this on here to be prepared for another week of bullet journaling when the time comes. I'm not a big fan of the show. I, aside from the fact that I live in California and those home prices and even a Fixer Upper type of home price is utterly fantastical to me. It might as well be freaking fairy tales for the amount of possibility where I live for that to be a purchase, which I know, you know, oh, you live in a high cost of living, your wages are higher too. You'd, you'd be surprised. But aside from that, like, feeling of grouchiness in general, I also, I just don't. Like, I, something about the, like, over excessive use of, like, shiplap and, like, the whole antler decorating thing, I just, I can't. It's just not my style. And so, generally speaking, that shit is not my aesthetic. This washi tape is not a green. I'm trying to make as much space as possible because I haven't been able to put the washi across the bottom. For... Anyway, I'm muttering to myself. This washi, suffice it to say, is being a little shithead. It's not very sticky, I will say. It makes it nice for removing, but for actual adhesion, it's not a very sticky washi tape, just a heads up for those of you who are interested in purchasing it. Their aesthetic is not my thing and I don't know, just the whole, it's just not my thing, man. There's just something about their whole like personalities and their and everything. It just, I know that people are like, oh, Southern Charm and blah, 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 but it's great on my fucking nerves. That is, you know, my personal opinion. However, this washi tape is gorgeous. So I couldn't hate on that. So I put this, this tape on the bottom, which is not something I've been doing, but I just don't like how this looks. I wanted to have it across the bottom. And I think it actually, with me scrunching it down, it works almost perfectly. And there is my little priorities box. I really liked this like little kind of embellishment on them. So I think I'm gonna add that as well. You see how I'm adding these like three little lines right here down and then just connecting them. That's just a quick way to add like a little bit of 3D to your your shit. And you notice my lines are also going all over the place right now. Well, that is just part of it. And this fucking washi tape's not staying down. 
Oh man, this is not changing my opinion. I feel kind of like a bitch for just ranting about how I don't like them. Where, and not that I don't like them personally, I don't know them personally, but I just, I don't know. This might sound like a bitchy thing to say, but when have I ever been afraid of being bitchy? That whole aesthetic, that like, I don't know, that rustic -y farmhouse crap, like it's pretty, I guess. And I'm not like super modern and I have my own aspects of it since I have, you know, butcher board or butcher block or whatever the fuck it's called, uh, countertops and white cabinets, but that was because they're from Ikea and the white ones were the cheapest. And then, yeah, I guess I like the white ones too because they're pretty. I don't know. It's just, it feels very unrelatable for me. Maybe it's not even the decorating style. It's just all the personalities, the buying the super cheap houses, the shiplap, the antlers, the fucking all that shit. It just does not resonate with this California girl. I don't get any of that shit. I watched it and I'm just like, I don't know, man. I mean, but I felt that way about the Lily, what is it, Lily Pulitzer? Like Pulitzer Prize, Lily Pulitzer stuff at Target. I've never even, I only heard about that shit when I was in the planner community. I'd never seen it before. And it's just not, I've got a tote bag because I thought it was pretty, but like it's never been a thing that I've been really into. So what's the other thing? Okay, if I'm just going down the list of things that I don't understand, because maybe that's really what it is. It isn't about me not liking the fixer upper people. I don't understand why people are like, oh, this is the most amazing shit ever. Uh, what is it, Ray Dunn? Is that the the mugs or something that everybody's obsessed with? Like, I don't even understand. I, I don't. Maybe I'm not watching the right YouTube channels or I'm not, fall, I don't know. Uh, nobody's explained it to me and I just don't get it. I do like this washi tape so now that I've bitched and moaned. I'm gonna take a second. I've got my mild liners. I'm gonna enter my key in. I'm going to fill in my time tracker for the day where I'm at so far. And then we'll move on to the next thing. I haven't set my priorities for the week. I'm gonna come back to that, I think. So next is my lettering every damn day, which I am going to draw in and then I will do today's prompt. Now, one question I've gotten before is how is it when I'm catching up, I can just pull out all these different fonts like out of my ass. And it's not usually how the question is phrased, but that's basically what they mean is how can I pull a bunch of fonts out of my ass? The truth is I have done this a long enough time, like lettering in general and lettering with different font styles where you just, you once you learn them, once the, the fonts are in your toolbox, it becomes, the more you do it, it becomes easier and easier to just pluck one out of your ass or multiple out of your ass. Isn't that like a awesome skill to be able to pull things out of your ass like that? You, that's a viral video right there. <laughs> the point being is that the more you practice, the more you will have the ability to start just using multiple fonts without even thinking about it. You might not be, they might not be gorgeous. Like if you look at my previous lettering, it was really fast. And so it was a little bit like crappy looking, you know, not my best quality but the practice is there anyway so there we go there's my challenge for today now these two pages are where i'm actually going to be putting a couple of things which is going to make this video a little bit longer one is i want to do a mild liner swatch page and one is i want to list out the weekly and daily chores that my kids do not by name because it switches every other when we every week we have them but just to block them into two blocks so that it's when my husband is like oh because we can never seem to stay on top of it this will help remind me who like we basically know it by like who empties the dishwasher and who does the cat box and if you can know who does either of those then you can figure out who does the rest of the chores if that makes sense but i'm going to start with the mild liner swatch page i'm just gonna free ball this because i'm not entirely certain what i want to do so i think i will just sort of start and we'll see where that takes me right I think I want to do, okay, so I did this printing. I think I want to 
do the cursive, like the bubble cursive, and that is not something I have been able to figure out how to do without a little bit of a guideline. I don't even know if you can see this, but I am lightly sketching in the cursive for the word liners, and I am going to trace around that to do the bubble letter cursive, and then I will erase once everything is dry. This is a thing I love to do for the look of it. I have not quite practiced it enough to be able to do it without the guidelines and since I hate using pencil that means I don't do it very often which then doesn't send me to practice you know what I'm saying like it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy here I think that looks sexy. Now I'll just erase that pencil after I give this a second to dry. So I am going to do them in the four sets. I just adjusted the exposure a little bit because I feel like the color wasn't showing up very well on camera. I'm trying to figure out like what the base is. Now I can do 12 across and two down and I think that that'll work. If that makes sense with counting the squares just to try and make everything look symmetrical without you know, messing around with it too much. So I've got a square of color and I've got the two lines and I think that that is exactly what I'm gonna go with and we will see how that goes. So this is the first set, which tends to be the most like kind of fluorescent of the four sets, like the most stereotypically highlighter of the four sets. And then here are these colors, which tend to be a little bit more like st like standard colors. I really wish there were more greens. Out of all of this, there's a green and a blue green, and that's it. But there's a bunch of different blue like colors, and I just wish there were more greens. All right, next set is the one that has sort of the the most like kind of out there colors, starting of course with brown. When you think about highlighters, I don't think anybody thinks about getting a brown highlighter. Now this set, like I said, is kind of the most out there for highlighters. I love these two though, magenta and smoke blue. Although this one doesn't, this one feels a little bit less magenta to me than maybe there's not enough red in it for it to be magenta to me, but whatever. But these two colors though, I love them very, very much. And now finally the new set of mild liners, the one that's hard to find, but jet pens, I don't know if it's back in stock or not, but it has shown up on jet pens and it's called on jet pens the friendly set although i will say that when i found it originally i found it under a different name i just can't remember what that name is and i can't for the life of me figure it out either i will say out of the entire range all 20 of these mild liners. This dark gray is probably the least usable as a highlighter in my mind because even the brown isn't that dark. I love this coral pink color. P.S. The lemon yellow, the apricot, all of the colors in this set, this last set, this friendly set, make me happy. The dark gray one I think is pretty even though I don't think it's that usable. These are all the mild liners. Now I'm gonna take a second erase the pencil marks at the top up here. I very rarely pencil things in, so this is kind of a magical moment. And I'm going to add this to my index. I'm actually gonna add the chore chart to the index too, both of them, because I know I'm gonna put the chore chart in next. This chore chart, I need to fill out two kind of sections. There is kid A and kid B. I counted, I did some majestic counting for these two sections, and then I'm going to put in to the middle here, or to the top here, a header. I'm gonna start with the header because that gives me time to collect my thoughts. I keep looking up at that word chore and I keep thinking it says s'more. <laughs> I think I'm hungry. There's the header and the footer, I guess, 
kind of together. So I'm gonna draw these two rectangles in and then we're gonna figure out what in the hell I'm gonna actually do. This isn't gonna be something that gets checked off every week. I have my little Erin Condren pad that goes up on my fridge for that. This is just a reference as to what chores belong to what kid. I hope you know I am freeballing the fuck out of this right now. I feel like if I had spent a lot of time like figuring this out, this could have looked a lot cooler. My husband and I have never been that great at enforcing chores. And when you share custody and your kids go to two different houses and they do two different systems, it's hard for anybody to get in the habit of anything. And so this is sort of my way. Oh, hi kitty. This is my way to sort of deal with it. These are how we have the daily chores divided up between kids. One kid who has the litter box as their big daily chore also takes out the trash and the recycling each day and sweeps the kitchen. The other kid kind of has everything sort of together. They take care of the dishwasher at night and in the morning, and then their big chore is to put away the leftovers, make sure the kitchen is wiped down at night before bed. For the weekly chores, this kid, Kid A, vacuums the whole house, including the laminate floors and cleans the cat food area, like just washes out the cat's fountain and, you know, cleans the cat, the whole area where the cat gets fed. And then the other kid, their big job is to clean the bathroom. And we tried to separate cleaning the kid's bathroom and the litter box because those are the two kind of nastiest jobs. You know, you have kids that are gross and cleaning, scrubbing the toilet, the bathtub, cleaning the bath, their bathroom. Like Jess and I, or I clean up my bathroom. And then their other job is to dust the house. The only things they're not allowed to dust are certain electronics that my husband would rather he dust himself because he wants to make sure that they don't get jacked up. This is how we divide them up and then every week it flops. And we try and handle the big chores on a weekend day, but sometimes it winds up being on a Wednesday. We're not super consistent with that. And we're still working on it. And this is the sheet that we put up on the refrigerator and then they just check off things as they get them done but this one they don't always aren't always good about it so now I have a reference spot so when I fill this puppy out whoops I can just reference this to build out the week I'm not gonna fill out my bullet journaling for the day because I haven't I was so excited to do these pages that I didn't even stop to think about what I was gonna write in it so but this is my setup for the week you have kids how do you handle chores at your house and if you don't have kids how do you handle chores at your house anyway like it's uh, keeping a house clean is not something I have ever been good at. And this is kind of unfamiliar territory for me. So I am learning as I go along. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.